Hey, welcome back. Surprise attack. What's going on, you guys? One second. Great. Uh, yes. Welcome to the Jetty Jet Show. I'm Jet. We're going to be doing some figure drawing today. And we're going to talk about plans. We're going to... Plans and motivation. Without fur further ado, let's, let's jump into it. Yeah, that was a little smooth. Yeah, that was a little... That was a little smooth. Hey, what's up, you guys? How's everybody doing? It's uh, it's a quiet, it's a quiet night tonight. Super surprise attack. Nobody knows. I'm on. We're live. And I'm just gonna draw. Super short notice, and there are already seven people watching. What a surprise! Welcome to the show, you guys. You guys can lurk. Stay quiet if you want. I'll be drawing figures for you. As soon as the song is over, as soon as this song is, song is over. Let's turn it off. Yeah, so that's how we do it here. Okay. Surprise, surprise attack, super surprise attack. What I got for you guys today is another Yaro Hana. Hey, what's up, guys? I've got um a brand new camera for you. That's right. That's right. Had some people point out how crappy my old camera was, so I thought I'd get a, a better one for you. Uh, yeah, so I just came in and we're gonna be using it today. Yeah. And I'm just gonna try to redeem myself because the last time I drew with, uh, uh Cynix. We drew with Cynix and he was, um, was making fun of everything that I was doing. So this time around, I'm gonna explain to you guys what, what went wrong. What went wrong and how we can approach our figure drawing. Okay? Alright, let's just let's just do let's just go over this figure really quickly. Oh, let's first I want you guys to know that the uh, the figure there's two types of figure drawing. There's the uh, Yeah, don't worry about creating anything good. That's right, that's right. Just just draw, just have fun. So um there's the Figure drawing where you're drawing from a photo reference, and there's a figure where you're drawing from actual life, where you're looking at the figure, an actual figure. So right now I have Body Kun. Body Kun, guys can get yourself one from Amazon. Check him out, Body Kun. He's an awesome, awesome, puzzle dude, 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 guy. And um, so first of all, I'm gonna draw. I guess I'll draw what you see on the screen for you. So. Let's draw what's on the screen. And I'm just going to quickly try to go quickly. I'm going to line up those shoulders there. And I'm going to do this kind of uh, I, I use this technique all the time for you guys. You guys always see me do the same technique. I call it the car frame technique. Because it looks like I draw like a frame thingy first. Uh huh. Now, the way I'm drawing right now is actually I'm interpreting the drawing. I'm not drawing it exactly from what like I see. I'm just looking at the general directions of the angles and kind of running with it. I'm not stressing out too hard about the um, the actual like perfect placement. I'm just want to get at the general kind of general idea of that. And so this is a technique you can use for drawing actual figures in life and f uh, from photo reference. Okay. I don't need a warm up actually. I've been drawing all day. Just stopped working. So um This is what I have for my figure. A really easy way to draw your head is just draw a square. It's better than a circle. It takes a it takes less time. It's slightly off that first line. Hey, what's up? Hey, Jeff, what's good? What's good, Sketch? Jimmy? Jimmy? Hey, Jimmy. I, I want a fish nine D and fire. What's up, guys? It's it's going pretty good. 
just drawing for you. I'm streaming. We're going to be talking about a little bit of motivation and, and, and making plans and goals for yourself once I get in the groove. Maybe I might not, might not be, might not even be able to touch on that, that subject. But uh, let's see where this goes. So after this, I like to lay down the muscles. And I can do it in the same layer, but I'm going to open up a new layer for this. And just work out the muscles using every line with intent. Very conscious of every line. I mean, you can take more, more than one line, but uh, to draw parts of the body. And if you're just starting off, you probably have to just, just uh, be patient and you'll get it. But what I'm doing is I'm actually looking at every muscle structure and kind of giving it a, a line to represent that, that structure. Now this, uh, this technique, I guess I should have done it for the live one. So right now I'm not looking at the mannequin. I'm actually looking at just the, is there a camera on this one too? Hold on a sec. Maybe I can turn on the camera for this so you can kind of see where I am. Uh, window capture, add to existing. Yeah. Wait, no, that's not what I wanted. Okay, yeah, I do have it here. Do I? Ah, screw it. I was going to put my face on there so I can actually move my hands around so you can see me, but it's all right. All right. Was Raiding Cynics' stream fun? <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, we were um, on Cynics' stream the other day. It's hilarious. Call them up on his phone in the middle of his stream. So this figure is is a uh, based off of an Andrew Loomis type of uh, anatomy. So if you're wondering how do you get these proportions and and shapes and how do I know where to put these things. Definitely check out my figure drawing videos. I highly recommend those. Um, but we can go over it quickly here for first timers. Um, when I'm drawing, I'm trying to keep in mind this thing. You let's see here. He he's about eight heads tall, and that means basically he's divided up into about eight parts. From one, two, three, four to this middle line here. And again, one, two, three, four. And it doesn't matter. I was off a little bit. But, you know, some lines are a little bit shorter. I can, yeah, so about eight heads tall. We are looking down, so we got a little perspective. So this isn't this isn't really counted as a head. It's in perspective. Um, so just about eight heads. And so when you're working on the figure, some things to keep in mind while you're doing the figure is one arm length is the same length as the other arm for the forearm. And then, so the muscle area and then the hand is like almost the size of the head or can be the size of the face. So some general, some general rules of thumb. Um, same with the leg. This length here from, I guess, this length here is the same length as this length here, with the exception of the uh, the knee somewhere in there. And like I said, my video where I talk about the actual breakdown is gets it gets really specific to to like actual measurements and. If you can memor get that like memorization down of like how to draw them facing like just um, front forward, just standing forward like this, and memorizing 
where does everything line up if you can just get that general idea you then can transfer that memory into drawing poses at different angles and what am I trying to say um yeah so get this first down and that's an eight head type of uh, proportion but there are, people aren't all eight heads like children are more like five heads and babies can be like three heads and you know what I mean so it, it varies between but having kind of a starting point is is really it's I think it's really helpful it was really beneficial to me in, in learning how to draw the figure so that breaks down the figure and so that's um yeah that breaks down the figure pretty much now we're able to draw that pose there Let's add some muscles just to make them look cooler. Now, he has like these joints and ball bearings and stuff. We don't have to draw them in if we want to draw more of a figure. Like, not a figurine. Okay. So that's that and I'm going to explain to you what the difference is between now I like to do this actual figurine type of thing this actual thing to carve out the ankles I like to do this I used to do that all the time when I was learning how to draw figures square off the toes and explain the difference between drawing from from life and from um, drawing from reference and how to draw from life and how to draw from reference. So this one, you can draw from life or reference. Okay. Or ref. I don't always spend too much time writing. Yeah. Um, you're hip. You're hip. You're on. You're on the GIGS show. We're live. Okay. Now, what what is uh what is the difference from drawing from from a, a photo? So when I draw from a photo, this is drawing from the photo. I'm looking at a picture, and everything kind of just remains in its its kind of um, general areas, and they don't move because the, the the picture's static, so it stays still. And when drawing from a photo, actually, this is what I was struggling with last time. Now, I was trying to get it to look exactly like the photo. So if you want to draw a photo and try to get its perfect likeness, which is a good practice to, um, to learn how to copy, then it's going to be a lot easier. It's going to be a lot easier. Even though I struggled last time, it's going to be a lot easier. Let's try to draw it again, this time from the photo, using the silhouette technique. All right. Now, it's going to be a lot easier compared to drawing from life, and I'll tell you why once we get there. Or should we draw from life first? Yeah, let's draw from life. Let's draw from life first, because we're, we're the drew from the photo. So from life, the figure actually isn't actually. It's kind of an, an angle for me. It's kind of more like this, what I'm seeing from you guys. The camera's more to the right. So I'm going to draw from the, the figure from, from life and talk about what are the differences to look out for. Can't forget the human ball barons, important part of the anatomy. <laughs> that's uh that's true, I guess. We got some ball bearings. Somewhat. Um okay, so when you're drawing from life, like if you ever draw people out in public or you're in a figure drawing class, the obvious difference is the object that you're drawing is constantly moving. So it's moving and you're moving. It's moving, you're moving. <laughs> Meaning, especially if you're drawing a figure that's uh, seated for a long period of time. So I'm going to try the silhouette technique from drawing from life, which uh, actually is it's not a, it's not a good idea. It's not a good idea. It's not. And, and I wonder if you guys could tell me why. Why is it not a good idea? Now, this is why I said maybe I should have used the, the other technique from, for drawing from life. 
And it's weird. When I think I'm looking at the silhouette, I'm not. I think I'm looking at it. I think I'm mimicking. You can't really gauge whether or not I'm screwing it up or not because you don't see what I'm seeing. So I will just do it the be to the best of my ability without stressing it too much. And I should have done this technique while drawing um, from the photo is what I'm saying. It's because when you're drawing this way from life is you're going to move. You're going to get tired. Your back changes. You might get up to go pee. You got to go sharpen your pencil. You might, the, uh, the object might move away. A lot of things can happen. <clears throat> Subtle, subtle shifts. It's it's bound to change. I don't I don't know anyone or yeah anyone who can remain in the exact same spot. Um, who can remain in the exact same spot for for longer than I guess two minutes? Really, you you don't even know it, but you might be shifting just a little bit. And this is a common issue that I had. Um, uh, while learning as a student and it didn't occur to me until I mean it would it, it kind of came up in my head every now and then but I didn't really put two and two together until I, I kind of struggled in, in front of you guys last time and I just realized you know what screw this you don't need to make it exact it's 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 really really difficult to make exact unless you have like um it's it's never gonna be exact actually I mean even like real super realistic drawings done like masters who who paint a drawing over like the span of like months even years sometimes like they'll have the model come in and just sit again and sit again and it's just like this life-size drawing things are gonna change over time the the mannequin can't just like you know like see, this is all wrong this is all wrong so there's 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 the there's a problem of actually seeing things for what they really are because we're brain is always interpreting things as symbols and and the idea of it so when we look at it that's why the negative spacing uh, techniques really helps is when you look at negative spacing uh, then you can really analyze the um, this is obviously wrong you can tell just not just by looking at that I'm just gonna draw the, the negative spacing here a little better just get a general idea. So this is why in the other technique is a little better. It kind of this one right here. When you're using these stick thingy things to drawing from life, it'll capture the overall gesture of the drawing. And what's going on here? I see. I love you, man. Love you too. Can't take pictures when when there are nude models. Sometimes I I you know. I don't know, Louise. I'm sorry. I'm kind of taken. Like, oh, God, good. Is it quite rude? Is it quite? It is quite rude. It's quite rude. Um. So you can see why how it can be really difficult um, to draw this way from life. Now you can do a, especially if you want to get it perfectly accurate. Like right now, I'm I'm doing it okay. I kind of if I were to lay this picture over what I see, it's I don't think it'll nothing I pro nothing will probably match up at all um there something will always be off um and <clears throat> to really achieve perfect kind of likeness or close to perfect i'd say like a 90 percent ratio let's call it is when you're doing when you're drawing from photo reference i think that's because everything's gonna stay still you can constantly check to see how, how far lines are from each other and and the, the the reference doesn't change on you so so I did that to the best of my ability but as you are as you know I would use this technique to draw this for drawing from life okay so that's that's what that's the uh, difference from drawing from life and and so why is it good? Why is it so good to why? Why is it good to draw from life? It it forces you to get out of that copy mindset. Now, copying copying was something that I started off drawing. That's how I started drawing, learned how to draw. So when I 
When I was little, I used to copy a lot of Dragon Ball Z pictures. A lot of Dragon Ball pictures. And I try to mimic to its perfect. Perfect. Its perfectness. So I, I, I got really good at copying. But it got my mind stuck on copying and not interpreting. So there's two sides to drawing. There's the copy and then there's the interpreting, stylizing, exaggerating, analyzing, and making it your own kind of drawing. Um, so, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it again, okay? This time, we're gonna do kind of the same thing, but we're gonna do, what's going on here? What's going on? Yes, there's the man, Jed. Hey, the old TV was so good. Ah, what's good? Go to coffee shops and draw people on their phones. They are good models. They are, and so you get what I'm. You guys get what I'm talking about. Like when they're on, when you go to Starbucks, nobody's frozen there in suspended animation. And even if they are, you'd have to be suspended, and you can only the only thing you could move is your hand. Then, then everything would stay pretty much still. But that's not how. That's not the case. So, really good artists go out there and they kind of like freeze frame it really quick or interpret it, and they just kind of use kind of character or stylistic styles to represent the, what they see, and that's gonna help you. So, you're not drawing it to be exact. And a lot of artists, a lot of I guess a lot of beginners try to draw to be exact, and because they're so used to copying. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. So I'm gonna try it this time. I'm gonna try my best to copy, copy, copy that guy using the photo that you guys see. And so from life, like I said, you can either use draw, you can do this technique from life, or you can do it for photo reference. But this one is only for photo reference. This technique, photo ref, and this is copying to copy, copy to copy. Now there's a great exercise that, that, that actually teaches you how to copy and it's really important to know how to see things for what they are and actually try to mimic it, mimic it to its closest ability and that's from the, the drawing from your left side of the right, right side of the brain book. I keep forgetting to check the name of that Arthur but author but it's called drawing from the right side of, right side of the brain and an example that they use is they draw a horseman, a knight, upside down, and it sh and it forces the person. I'm not going to draw a good looking horse, but I'm just I'm just trying to say he's holding a sword, and there's a horse, dude. Now the pro the purpose of this is so that you don't see the object for what it is. You try to see the lines for what they are, because we don't we remove we we remove the uh, the idea or the object. The, the identity of the object and we're just looking at each and every line arbitrarily so like if I see this line I have to make that line exactly the same this one comes up this way it comes up this way this one comes up like that a little bit so it comes up like that a little bit and you try to mimic it to its best of, best of your ability and you come up with the drawing you flip it upside down and then, then all these like people who've never drawn before get super surprised because like my god it looks good they get surprised when it's the other way, we kind of interpret it. We kind of are intimidated, and for some reason, you go cr just crash. You just crash and burn. So that's what happens with me, um, especially during the last stream. Is when I saw the figure, I'm trying to draw it from life, or trying to draw it from the photo. Actually, I was trying to draw it from the photo, okay, and I couldn't do it because I'm over here looking at the picture and interpreting it. Now interpreting it is a great it's a great tool. It's really good. You have to train yourself to interpret things. And I was trying to show you guys how I was analyzing the points to points. Some people didn't get it. They thought I was drawing like spider webs. I wasn't drawing the figure, I was drawing the the relationship lines. Okay? So I'm gonna pick the size of his head and do this thing here. Alright. Did you ever study Bridgman? No, I have his book though. I did assignment in my figure drawing class, drawing a master study upside down from draw it from the shape and lines and not from what we know. Draw what you see versus what you Yes, 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 yes. Yes, that's a good way to say it. Alright. 
so I'm going to try my best to just outline this dude and this is where I try to draw for what it is without looking at all the the details so and this is where all those relationships come into play so like how big is this head in relationship to this arm and I'm looking at it there's that point to this hand here so that's about right I'd say I'm gonna use boxy lines to to get to where I need to be and I'm gonna see this oh I'm sorry I'm shaking the camera I'm sorry I'm sorry my my hand just touched the camera okay the shoulder relationship is about this angle to that shoulder here and there's like much more distance this line of the shoulder to this line here see that there and also that lights bling in I think because there's too much light yeah uh, that's coming in from the window let me shut the cur curtain ah uh, it's gonna take a lot of energy <laughs> I can't get up no we're not gonna do that okay so first of all I can just I can just you know how about this we can sketch that um skeleton the same way here to here so if we know that's about the length of that arm this this finger is lower than the other one so we can draw this here and intersect it there it is slight slight angle I think there's a slight slight angle okay let's try to draw this shape here so we have this circle end here see how difficult it is we're just trying to practice looking and seeing the shape and mimicking it as close as we can and if it's not exact it's okay but try your best to make it exact <laughs> that's the game here that's the that's the name of the game here all right um uh, you should draw the model upside down I should. I should, but he won't stay upside down. He, he, he could, he could, he could stay upside down. But we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that. Can't ask the model to stand upside down. All right. So I think that's just about where his hand's gonna stop there. Now I'm gonna figure out how much. Let's see, I'm gonna figure out how. Where do I this? Where? How far does this part go? We can draw some lines from this edge of his head down straight down a little line there and an imaginary line when you're looking at the figure does it intersect that I'd say it lines up pretty closely to that so we're just gonna we're just gonna simplify it by doing this creep cool keep yeah let's just do that keep cool keep keep now now it's coming back to me now it's coming back to me yes I do remember doing this for in figure drawing, uh, drawing more basic shapes. Basic shapes because I don't want to draw the muscles in yet. I just want to draw the general kind of um, the general kind of shape first. So these polygons, and I can shave them off later. But I want to get the general kind of location and proportion of objects. Okay, so if I drew a line here straight down you look at the figure mm -hmm. up this from this armpit to this armpit I remember doing this in my class well, I got real good at it too real good at it I was like sharing with my friends I was like look guys look 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 what I learned we can do it this way And everyone's just like, Jet, shut up. We have our ways. We don't need to listen to you. Uh huh. If the lines drop down there, this moved over to the right ever so slightly. Mm hmm. It's going to do this. Comes back this way. I 
But yeah, Manga Studio, Clip uh, Clip Studio Paint is the new name for it. Why is the reference bigger on the screen than the drawing? Ah, that's another thing. So you, you are the master of your drawing, right? You can create it as large as you want it or as small as you want it. And yeah, yeah, that's why actually, that's why you, so you guys can draw alongside me. I can draw it this way, but I won't be able to see it actually. <laughs> um, but when you're drawing from life, you want to draw like you want to fill your page. And that's one of the trickiest parts. Actually, you'll discover when you excuse me, when you're drawing from life, you want to draw the figure so that it fills up the page, especially if you're doing one figure on that one page. You don't want to have like in the center or like or like you start drawing and it starts ending up on the far to the, to, to the left or right. Having kind of a plan to set him up so that he he lays like he lays like that's why doing it this way is the f easiest and fastest way to get everything lined up because you're, you're measuring the proportion of the figure. But I don't want to do that right now. I want to want to I want to. I want to train my eyes to see what I see, you know, like see what I see basically. So if I draw the figure like this size, I have to still be able to see the relationships in size and proportion to each other. That's that's really the uh, the difficult part of it here. So there's this angle here for the hip area, and then there's just a small dis distance from here. Let's let's just draw this line here, down to the knee. Draw this line that comes out this way. I'll see that there. Kind of like scaffolding. The scaffolding technique. That's what it is. And this line kind of lines up with that. There. And here. Did. Did you try sometimes start from the robo bean? Robo bean. I'm not sure actually. So yeah, there's this is really the difficult part of drawing from life and sometimes feet can be too big or heads going to be too big or things especially if you're drawing them part by part by part on this leg here. Where's the crotch? I'm drawing the line that stopped here, but look at this. If I drew the line up this way, that's the angle from this finger to that crotch. So it's going to slightly come up at an angle here. And it's going to be around there. That's where it is. But there, obviously he's he's ball and joint, man, so you'll see this line here, but it's okay. We don't draw that line. We draw the line from here like this. Give that thigh muscle like that and then this this bottom of the knee there's gonna be an angle here slide angle see this these are the relationships we're, we're talking about all right the relationships we're talking about that right there this is the bottom of the other Knee. There's a stronger. That's actually a stronger angle. It's much stronger. It goes this way. Yeah. Could you imagine doing this? From a life drawing. With the erase. You hold your pencil up and line things up. All that crazy mess. Now you can see why I highly suggest doing the frame technique. For even if I were to draw. From life. This works a lot easier. So train your brain to s to make out shapes and like the first one I did was I just breezed through it because I know how the figure looks and I just kind of interpret it and I'm getting more inspired by it. Obviously I'm drawing the figure, but it's uh this leg here. There's more of a bend here. So this line here. It's gonna be this strong line here to that leg there, and I'm just like, ugh. There's a m I might as well draw the the figurine itself. It has all these nice lines in it. 
but I'm definitely feeling much better without <laughs> without cynics over here laughing at me. No, it was a good experience. I had fun with I had fun with cynics. For sure. Uh huh. So that's that's really a difficult thing. Is you you can try to do this is when you're drawing it larger scale and you're drawing something that's small and trying to explode it. You have to basically enlarge everything in relationship to each other. So you're not drawing it exactly for what you see because you have to then take the size of it and gauge your own relationships. Because if you draw it exactly what for what you see, then it's gonna look tiny. Um, so, we're here. So I'm gonna begin shaving off the parts just to make it more exact. And this is, I think, yeah, yeah. So I'm able to copy the figure a lot better using now. I have like these general shapes here. Um, and their proportions to each other are a lot closer to the actual photo. So it's going to keep things in line. Um, I noticed you, Lorpo. Hey, how you doing? Welcome to the show, buddy. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. You will improve faster. Let's see. First, first you study the way that the rib cage and the pelvis works together. And after it is much easier, put the limbs in. My arrow is pointing to the wrong co comment in the chat. Huh. Okay, so I don't know this can be kind of boring for some people, but I think it's important to talk about this. Mm. Very, very important uh, question somebody asked that spawned all of this is what was the difference between drawing from life and what's what's the benefits? As you can see this is going to train your eye drawing from a photo this is what I'm doing drawing from photos it's going to help you to draw things for what they are and what you see and mimic it to its closest closest so now it's kind of easy just if I pulled out a little bit what if I just sat this up right next to the now I can cheat. I can actually <laughs> look at the, my drawing on the screen and see the figure on the screen and mimic that way. I can do that. I can do that. That is so cheating. Okay, so I have to continue looking at the relationships. This bottom breast here, there's an angle on there. There is an angle there. There is an angle. And wow, there is that. There's some rib cage here. And it, there is a tip, a, t a tilt going this way. Drawing things so that you can s mimic things a lot easier. Drawing things so that you draw them for what they are and not what you think they are. Really, really important. But once you get this get the hang of this and you've done years of it it's gonna stick with you and it can stick with you in a bad way too it may affect you too much because you start relying too much on referencing and not being able to interpret it that's that's the kind of a pitfall pit hole 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 pit what am i looking for you guys it's the uh, the trap. It's the it's the trap basically. It's um. If you guys find a be better word, please let me know. I want better words. The danger. It's the danger of drawing from reference all the time. Is that you become too dependent on the photo reference. And you you lose that part of that brain, the muscle that you are, the, where you're interpreting things, and that's that's what I think happened. Is I uh, during school, I was always we were all we were always drawing from life. So 
there's you know there's a policy you don't want to copy you just want to sorry you, you don't want to make up stuff you want to try to draw things perfectly perfectly all the time especially if you're drawing faces you want to make it look like the person that you're drawing and that was kind of like something to be proud of we would draw photo reference photo stills and make it look exactly perfect all right, so yeah, you're relying too much on reference. A uh, Lego good says, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's tricky, isn't it? Because I stopped using reference for like years now. Years. I just reference in like the reference I use is for inspiration. Definitely, if if, if you need a design idea, you pull up some robots, pull up some animals, and you. And you kind of look at the anatomy and that kind of referencing, but uh, nothing in terms of like copying things for exactly what they are. I mean, that's not the reference I'm talking about. But it's been years, 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 years. That hand is much, much too angled, much too angled because of my box. See, that box is way off. But it's okay. It's there now. The bumps are a little less subtle. I mean, more subtle. And that's something that I notice is that when you're used to interpreting things and stylizing things, your shoulder, you think in your mind, it does this. When in reality, this it just kind of just does this, you know. Or like, you know, it's it's there's a, it's a lot more subtle than you think it is. It's a lot more subtle than you really think it is. A lot of parts of the what you're looking at is a lot more subtle. Uh, it's tedious, but I just wanted to show you guys. This is kind of the the way you try to do something from um, photo reference. If you're trying to get that, practice your 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 eye to see things. That's how you do it. So as you can see, I used uh, relationships, I used boxy figures, and something I'm going to do next is something I wanted to do to show you guys the more interpretive approach. Now Lego good, if you're getting stuck, tr try to vary up your shapes, don't stick too closely to the figure. I'm going to try to do that next. Okay. And then his head, let's just do this here. Hey, Shampi. So I was not looking at that photo, that, that, uh, that, uh, for the screen to try to get it right. There's obviously a lot of things off about it. Um, but I think overall it's got like a, I guess, an 80% accuracy. Like this hand can be much more angled, there's more space in this area. Let's 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 go this way now. So there's, for me, I'm seeing that there's definitely more space in this here. <laughs> this hand looks like it's more angled this way. Dang it! The heck's wrong with my hair? Um, his head, his head can be protruding a little bit more forward. So this here, just a lot of things, and we can spend all day trying to make it look perfect. But you know, at some point, it's just like it's boring, right? It's just you're just copying from a, a photo to get look to get it to look perfect. I mean, what's the fun in that? If you want to do that, just take photos. The fun stuff comes in when you're trying to draw original stuff, right? Uh, I have a friend who pump out drawing every day. They are accurate, but it's still holy cow! Wow, there's there's me who pumps out in one month. They are accurate, but take too long. They are accurate, but take too long. Yeah, 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 yeah. So my one of my goals actually this year is to draw a drawing every single day. One original drawing. Yes, 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 yes. I have to practice 
on my own time after work and also make an original drawing so that's drawing from, from, from what was this one what was this one this one was uh, interpreting from life yeah this this was no it wasn't it was a mixture yeah I tried to draw the silhouette and all that interpret interpretive from life alright so drawing from ref uh, we'll call this what do we call the, the, the car frame car frame a body frame or Andrew Loomis um Scarridge, how you doing buddy um next we're gonna do the balloon balloon technique balloon now this is a technique that I remember seeing a lot in uh, how to draw books where they draw a lot of basic shapes right so to do this it's gonna be the same figure let's just do the same figure because you already know how it looks right I'll do it from the, the life mannequin because that's too small on there so so when I'm drawing this way, is there? Yeah, I guess we'll use this one. So I'm gonna just use shapes to um, make the drawing. Okay, so cynics would get angry at me right now for using that circle. I'm gonna use a square for his head. Okay. Now for his body, I'm gonna use this, this kind of this kind of balloon shape this way, and this is gonna give you a lot more. I'd say, um, no, this is a shoulder. We can use a circle for shoulder, circle for shoulder, because this one's kind of behind, the other one's kind of in front. Balloons or cylinders. This is gonna also help you with figuring out the uh, the angles of things. Oops, this one's gonna come up this way. So look at which direction the the piping is gonna go. I'm gonna do this here. Damn. Uh, yeah, mittens, yeah, mittens. Mittens are good. Let's use mittens. This one goes away from us, so we're gonna use this here. And this one, this one, we don't really see. You know what I mean? The 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 tubing, so it's kind of the opening to the tube, so it's kind of flush with the horizon, or or. Or our eye level. I'm saying, I'm trying to say, and uh, this hand's closed, so let's just use a, cir a circle. Now, the the dangerous or the pitfall, <laughs> pit hole part of this, the dang it. The hard part about this is that you will, uh, you might fall into is, is drawing things too, too uh, exaggerated. When you draw things a little too exaggerated, a little underwear, what you lay on top of it, it's going to be, you know, like, like I did the hand over here. You know, it's what you're laying, your foundations, whatever your foundation is, that's what your final drawing is going to be based off of. So. And we're gonna do one more technique after this. Gonna show you guys another one. So I'm drawing these kind of big old shapes. Yeah. Pit holes, pitfall. Come on, man. Give me a better word. <laughs> Downside. Con. Negative. Okay. 
So you don't see what I see. I'm drawing from life right now. So give me a break, okay? Give me a break. Give me a break. Actually, I want to draw his head lower because his head's lower. The lining, the his shoulders, shoulders line up kind of. So I'm looking above him. Now I'm going to sculpt out the shapes based off these. These here. Why aren't you te teaching? them basics I'm trying to teach them basics this is the basics see how I'm drawing this, this crosshair here and how these tubing kind of help lay out the uh, general direction of these arms here this line up here and we can just we can just fill it in with our brain you know if you know the if you know the figure, after you've studied my figure drawing videos, so now I can just branch off and do my own figure, not even looking, well, kind of looking, but but not really worried about it too much. And that's kind of the uh, the balloon technique. It's kind of got some character. So the pitfall of you know your foundations, your first initial foundation is gonna affect how your final drawing looks. But that's that's gonna be it's an advantage. It's not a pitfall. It's gonna be advantage actually. This is how you draw using shapes. Using shapes to help illustrate your um the feel the look and feel you're drawing like like this dude has super broad shoulders but i can draw a character using a super super broad shoulder type of shape you know learning how to push that super shapes like that you know we can put his head over here we can put his head over here Super stylized. Or we can draw a dude the opposite. We can do this. Maybe, maybe like that with big old arms. Using shapes to to kind of, um, you know, help illustrate. Maybe hands over here. See? And if I'm doing it this way, this is the thumbnail of these random shapes of these figures. You can see how it becomes very useful. You can do a, a guy that's very skinny and it's very fast and efficient. Just beep, 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 beep. Obviously, when you're this skinny, you don't want your arms to be lugging. They kind of come back up because you're skinny now. You can. You all of a sudden have the strength to hold up your hands. Mm, skinny head. Okay. You can use not just squares, even though even though cynics would want me to use squares all the time. We can also use circles. You can use circles. You know. This kind of look here. Do. Guy's kind of scratching his head, and I'm using a combination of things. I'm using lines, I'm using squares, I'm using circles. And we did a little quantipasa pose. Okay. Kind of a normal, normal dude. Scratching his head because he's normal. Uh, yeah, so all we've been drawing is men so far, but it also works for, for women. Jets past videos deal with more basic stuff. This is fine. Is this is this is this too complicated? Is it a little too difficult? Goodness gracious. Okay. So this is great because it helps. It, you can break out of the that that skeleton you have here. This skeleton that you that you're so accustomed to using. 
in proportions, you know, being really strict with it. When you start using these balloons, it kind of breaks kind of breaks that uh those guidelines. You kind of go way beyond it. Sometimes these shoulders are like six heads apart, you know. Those really exaggerated characters. This stream is too smart for me. Oh no. Oh no. All right. Um so let's draw let's draw a girl real quick. Yeah, let's draw let's draw a girl. Okay. See that? See see curves. Obviously it's a girl. And this hand goes up. See? Shapes. Now you can take those shapes and you can just, you know, like you can you can go in there and blow them up and work on the the, the muscles and the detail. The more you uh, practice, you know, the more the more detail and more rendered you can make it, or the more kind of uh, Pixar esque, you know, where they kind of I think a lot of Pixar 3D films nowadays they favor more strong silhouettes and shapes. So like this technique, definitely try to just you know, it's all about shapes nowadays, not so much um, definition. Um, I don't see very much in anime where they focus a lot on shapes. I mean, they do have some like um, like Trigger Studios or like a lot more, you know, stylized and animated type of anime. But for the most part, everybody kind of uh, not all anime, obviously, but they 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 worry they worry about detail, fine detail, like hairstyles, you know, for ind individual characters, height, face, you know, different different methods for for dis for identifying the characters, and and uh, you know they both they both have their own, you know, it's. neither one is better better than the other or whatever it's they both have their advantages pros and cons and it all comes down to preference who you like more better you know and it, that's not to say that um neither one uses the other ways technique a lot of time actually a lot of earlier not earlier a lot of stuff from the old days um western comics where they use they always drew characters in similar um Proportions, not, the shapes weren't as strong as, as as they are today, and I think that was uh, really really pioneered by like Disney, and um, the animation studios. Because if you had to draw so many frames all the time, the quickest way to identify a character is not through the detail, it's through their shape, and so big simple shapes is, would be their trick. It, it came about through tricks. Trickery. This wouldn't fly in Art Academy. Just saying. Uh, it's Moe. 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 Uh, that guy seems skipping leg day. Oh, shit. What's up? Have a drink. Let's have a drink, you guys. Cheers. Cheers. I'm back. Don't talk about art academy. <laughs> you have PTSD. I have PTSD. Oh man. Oh, the show is end ending in one minute. It really is, and I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna extend it. We won't talk about motivation. I think this sums up everything. Uh, there is one more technique that I wanted to show you guys. I think I can be. I can cover it. I can cover it. Let's do it. Um. Yeah, art school kind of gives people PTSDs. It's funny. It's funny, but not funny. But funny. But not ha ha funny. It's he. he oh, it's he he. He he. He he funny. 
Uh, okay, so the, the the last technique. I mean, there's 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 many ways to approach the drawing, and I'm just trying to give you guys a couple. There's a lot more. There's the the thumbnail like technique and the I'm trying to get more space here. The grasshopper technique or what we call them, grasshopper. But this one is it's the same as this. It's a combination of, of this. So now you're really kind of um okay, first you're going to you're going to decide on how big is a character by drawing a line. Okay? So if the character is this height, then he's going to be this height. This is the not a thumbnail. Line. So if, I'm just going to draw this height but this size head. So like almost like a nine head size character. 3 Four, five, six, seven, eight. Now it's about nine heads. I mean, it's it's, it's a small head. It's a small head. Let's shrink it some more so I can get more space here. And this this technique is uh it's good for creating characters on a larger scale. It's a combination of everything that we've learned just now. So we have stick technique. The, sorry, car frame, car frame technique, the thumbnailing technique, and also the balloons. The balloons, see? Is this draw a random pose that I kind of came up with in my head? See, I can draw a stick for an arm, or I can just draw the shape for an arm. Whatever works the best for you. See? Like that. So we had the length of, uh, of the figure by drawing the line and then we're drawing this kind of balloon technique and this is going to give us these lines, we're drawing back and forth with these lines so that we can keep in mind the proportions. Say, for example, you're drawing a character that's always nine heads tall and you want to make sure he's nine heads tall, then this is kind of how you would you would do it in a large, large scale. If you don't want to draw at small scale, you can do a large scale. And then you can draw on your... Let's just draw like a, I don't know, a warrior. He's a warrior, okay? He's a warrior, dude. He come back home. He come back home from fight. And he's like, yeah, I'm back. How's everybody doing? We're back home. What's up? What's going on? So keeping things in kind of proportion. And this is one way to to design your characters. I actually like to use for concept designs, I like to do the thumbnail style because then I could really push the shapes Kind of went over it here. We would draw it larger. Or we would, sorry, magnify it, make it larger. Let's draw like a like a dude, like a dude with the. Let's see here, like a dude with the like this kind of. He has like a beard. He's like a, he's like a Viking. A Viking. Yeah, he's like a Viking. He like, he like a Viking. Okay, I don't know how Vikings dress. I actually had a big project where I actually did a bunch of Viking stuff. He did. Is he a Viking? Well, I got a hair showing. Let's get a Viking. That's right, Viking. Oh, I'm gonna type in Viking. All right, let's, let's get some. Let's get some Viking. I meant Art Academy in general. Well, that one stuff. Into some are pretty good others. 
Now I said this is one hour jet. One hour. Let's type in Viking. This Viking outfit. I needed some inspiration here. Oh, look at this. Cool. It's it's a it's a bunch of uh, Halloween costumes. Great. The baby's cute. Maybe we'll use not hot hot Viking. Hot lady Viking. I don't want to scroll too much. It might get a little, little, little scary. I like this dude. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, just like I imagined, just a bunch of fur. Let's let's carve it out with this. Yeah, this dude's got. Yeah, this is not a Viking beard. Call that a beard? Come on. He's got to have a beard. Come on, dude. You wanna you wanna battle? You wanna battle? He's like, man, we come home. We eat lamb meat. Sorry, Vikings. <laughs> I don't Let's see him. I'm making it up. This doesn't exist. This this part doesn't exist. Okay. It's a big old belt thingy thing. Uh huh. Let's just say his shirt opens up on the side there. Cause he's a savage. He doesn't need heavy armor. How's it going, my family? I think that's how they say <laughs> I've returned home from the, from the raid. Let's keep going up. This is the belt. The belt has to be much, much higher. So as you can see, I'm playing with shapes. I'm playing with um, textures, racing out. Ooh, much bigger boots. Give me some bigger boots, and maybe some more ball bearings. This one, this one. Oh, he got to have fur all over. It's cold. It's cold and f that's kind of weak that's kind of weak jet there we go you got the squinty eyes you got the squinty ass oh shoot where did the those monitor go oh shoot what do you enjoy besides drawing what do I enjoy what do I enjoy I enjoy plenty of things I like watermelon that's all I got is watermelon now there it is Vi Viking Viking because Vikings are freaking awesome. Oh sword sword. We need sword somewhere sword sword. Where does he put his sword? What did they sword sword are you tripping? We don't sword in this place We axe We axe That's what we do Yeah, we axe we X. So that would be a rough draft for a uh, Viking dude from uh, from Viking Village. So put some strap straps. All right, I'm gonna call it a I'm gonna call it a stream. Hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys learned something. There it is. We got figure drawing from life and Vikings. A 
five. There you guys. You guys, any questions? I am going to call it a show, you guys. Thanks for joining. I hope you guys learned something again. Keep saying that. I'm just going to let this play here. Play out real quick. Play on. So, until next time, I'm, uh, I'm going to go take a break. You guys have fun. Good luck. Keep drawing. And bada bat. Bada bat. Bada bat boom. Peace. <laughs>